All right, in today's video, we're going to look at some differences between an EKS cluster and an Omni cluster. And both of them are ways to manage Kubernetes clusters, uh, but one is a managed service by AWS, and the other one is something you can deploy and manage on your own hardware and own it. You can also deploy Omni clusters in a cloud provider like AWS, uh, but in this case, I'm gonna do it on-prem just to show you uh, what it might look like. So let's get started, and the things we're gonna look at is uh, an EKS cluster, how to create it, how to upgrade it and how to delete it and, and then same things for an Omni cluster and as some of you may know I worked at AWS on the EKS team for three and a half years and how slow it was was always embarrassing um, it was always a, a thing that existed and even every effort we had to make it faster um, never made it fast enough it was always pretty embarrassing and uh, and so we're gonna look at it and does it matter how fast the Kubernetes cluster spins up um, sometimes yeah it does um, if you do this for testing if you have a lot of clusters uh, upgrades specifically if they take a long time um, if you are doing them frequently like you should be um, you should be upgrading them probably a couple times or three times a year and uh, if you have one cluster maybe it doesn't matter because by the time you stand it up and upgrade it like eh, it's okay um, but if you have dozens of clusters or hundreds of clusters um, this really adds up and it is a huge time seek and um, and so we're gonna show it and we're gonna do it by timing our commands and so let's go ahead and start with running the EKS cluster first and I'm going to do it with EKS control. EKS control is a wrapper for CloudFormation um, and it's just going to, we're going to wrap it with the time command so we can see how it runs, but we're also going to run this timer here uh, just so you can um, see it run. And we're going to specify that we want version 128 and give it a name and everything else is going to be the defaults. Um, and this is going to give us a highly available Kubernetes uh, control plane uh, in AWS, and that's a managed AWS service, obviously, and you're going to get uh, three etcd nodes and two API servers and two controller managers, uh, all the things you typically would need for a control plane. Uh, and in this case, we get this uh, node group as well. We get a two node node group. And again, we're leaving all of the defaults. And so that's going to pick things like Amazon Linux 2 um, with whatever uh, managed uh, version they have, the EKS optimized version. And, and we're just going to let that run. So let's, let's get rid of that here in the corner and just let it sit there while we go ahead and spin up an Omni cluster as well. And in this case, let's switch over to showing the Omni web interface. And I could do this through the CLI, but it's honestly pretty boring because it's going to go pretty fast and and you're not, um, it's just, you know, it, let's, let's click through it. If you've ever tried to run an EKS cluster by going through the console, I am sorry. I, I am truly sorry. That is an excruciating process and no one should ever have to go through that. Um, but in an Omni cluster, it's a little different. So log into my Omni instance here and uh, only thing I did to prep this was I downloaded the right installation media. Um, I picked an ISO. Uh, that I wanted AMD 64. I have uh, five machines behind me and that's going to become my control plane and, and data plane. So I have three nodes for control plane and two for the data plane, just like we're getting in EKS. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to, again, I'm going to click through and, and show you how to do it. Uh, and so we're going to create a cluster and we're going to say not EKS. And we're going to use the same version uh, we're deploying for the EKS cluster, um, which is 128 something. They don't tell us. Um, so we're going to get that. And we're actually going to go a, a version behind on uh, Talos 2 so we can show you how the upgrade on the OS works. And we're going to go ahead and just encrypt those disks. And then down here, select which nodes we want to be part of our control plane or our worker nodes. And, and so we have a control plane, control plane, control plane, and a worker node, worker node. And that just gives us um, exactly what we might want and what we're getting from an EKS cluster as well. So we're going to start our timer and click the create cluster button here. And so there we go. Uh, we have the cluster getting ready. Um, uh, again, all these machines were connected. Um, so this isn't going to uh, create them from scratch. It's not going to, prov it's, it's going to actually do an OS install. Um, and you see here, we're in an installing phase. Um, that's actually writing the files to the drive. So it's, it's, taking the bits of Talos that we want and sticking them on the hard drive so that it reboots and always comes back. It's installed, it's ready to go. Um, and Talos is a, a mutable, uh, immutable operating system with an API for driving it. And so it's calling those APIs, saying install the disk, and, and it's 
going through and, and we're getting ready. Let's check in on our EKS cluster. And uh, we're, we're waiting for CloudFormation. Um, so CloudFormation is their infrastructure as, as code tooling and it's the, the maybe not the fastest thing in the world, uh, but it's what they offer and it's what's defaults. Um, you could probably squeak out uh, maybe a minute or two out of this creation by using something like Terraform, um, which would probably be a little bit faster, but in general, it's gonna be about the same. Um, and this does depend on how big you're making clusters, what regions you're making them in. Uh, but in this case, again, we're just doing all of the defaults US West 2. Um, but for my my Omni cluster here, uh, we're doing it in, in Justin's office region one. And um, <laughs> so we see here, uh, we have these machines here. Three of them have names so far. One of, one of, one of them is rebooting already. Let's go ahead and check on it and see if we get any logs from it. Um, and so we see our last task is rebooting here. While that's going through, I'm going to go ahead and download my Talos config, which is going to give me uh, the actual like ac API access to those machines. So let's download this. And let's go back over here and uh, move it. And we're going to move that into my .talos folder so that I can query things on the nodes themselves. Um, let's go ahead and export that real quick. I have an alias here, ET, which is an export Talos, and it's going to give me a list of all my Talos configs. I'm exporting that not Talos config. Um, so now we can go back and let's look at one of the machines. This one says it's booting. Let's just grab the name on it and let's see if we can get to the dashboard already. And we can run Talos control dashboard with that node name that's in the cluster again because this talos config gives me access into the cluster not quite ready yet so let's just let it run a little bit longer until we actually get the um the kernel to start up and and some of these machines reboot a little bit slower than others uh but we'll we'll get there Checking in on our EKS cluster, and we're waiting for cloud formation. So we're just we're gonna keep we're gonna keep waiting for cloud formation uh, while that's uh, while that goes. I have one of my nodes now in a not ready state. Uh, L H O. Oh, that's not one of the nodes. Ha, huh. that's why. Let's do this. Let's look at this dashboard. There we go. Um, so now this is streaming the local console dashboard over the API back to my terminal. So I can see not only my uh, logs here down below, but I also see this like top shelf dashboard, which is super handy. It tells me things like my host name, uh, my Kubernetes version, my kubelets, and my stage. So right now I'm in a running state, uh, but I'm not ready because this knows that it's a control plane node. And in order to be in a ready state, I need to have the other components of what a control plane should have, the API server, controller manager, and scheduler. And so those are all um, still starting up here. And as we see in some of these logs that are coming in, it's waiting to kind of do some of these bootstrapping commands um, to get that up and running. And this runs with static pods. So the static pods are running uh, when the kubelet boots and it's going to download those images and start uh, running them um, this also is going to bootstrap the etcd cluster because the etcd cluster is a requirement for your control plane because you need that uh, you need that quorum on etcd before you're going to start up the api server and all that other stuff so we're going to wait for etcd to uh, spin up reach quorum with the other nodes and then we can start deploying our uh, control plane nodes so all of these show not ready they're probably in a state of etcd bootstrapping If I go into the machine here, um, you can see, again, similar stuff that we have. Down here, you actually see the services and things like etcd. Here, we get the logs uh, directly from etcd um, if we want to like click in on that node. So we don't need to see all of the logs. We don't need to see everything from the node. We just want to see service logs from etcd. And so um, we see it doing a rejection here for a remote address. blank server name. It's waiting for quorum to be reached. 
Oh, no, it's not. Uh, I just switched back and it looks like everything uh, booted up. Etcd reached its the state it needed and and we are almost running. We have one more node, but let's get our cube config as well. And move that. EKS cube config into dot cube. Let's export that. I have another alias called EK and we're going to export it and K get nodes. And we're done. Uh, this has been ready for over a minute now. Um, we have our three control plane nodes and that took about six minutes um, to bootstrap the five node cluster. Let's check on etcd or let's check on the EKS cluster. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for cloud formation. Um, don't know what's going on. So let's poke at this cluster on the Omni cluster just a little bit because it's up and running. We can see our version here. Um, let's see what we have inside the cluster. And you can see inside the cluster when we're running it, we actually get a lot of details here, what you don't typically see from a managed service. Um, we can see the API server, the controller manager, and the scheduler all as part of our standard output. So if I want to look at the logs for any of those pieces, um, I can I can get them through kube control. I don't have to go out to a third party service like CloudWatch logs, which is how you would get your EKS logs um, is you send them out to CloudWatch and you have to deal with CloudWatch to view what's going on in the cluster. In this case, I can see all of the components that are running as part of the control plane as well. Um, and of course we get uh, core DNS, kube proxy uh, for the the traffic and and cube flannel is our CNI. And so we have flannel, everything's deployed, ready to go. Uh, and that took like, it's just over six minutes. Actually it was a little less than six minutes. I just wasn't fast enough to see it um, happen. So I'm not gonna make you wait on EKS. Uh, we're gonna speed up that, uh, this video here with timer and then we'll come back as soon as it's done. Okay, so there we go. We have an EKS cluster finally. It took 16 minutes. Um, that's 10 minutes longer than uh, the Omni cluster did. I could have deployed two clusters at the same size and and we would have got something out of it. So let's look at it real fast um, just to see what's in it. And here let's uh, get our uh, pods. And as, I, as you can see, we have the AWS node, which is kind of the CNI. Uh, with the VPC CNI and its core DNS and kube proxy again on those two nodes. Um, it, everything else is being handled on the AWS accounts. The, the side of the cluster that you can't see, the control plane, um, is off limits to you. And so we just see these two nodes here uh, running inside the cluster. And that is, that's what we get access to. We have an API server that's obviously on the other end of that, but we don't have uh, visibility into it. And if we look at the uh, outputs with the nodes fully, we see here that um, we're running these Amazon Linux 2 uh, operating system with a um, with Kubernetes 128.8. So that's where we can actually see which uh, patch version we're running and a 5.10 kernel, which is which is pretty old here. Um, if I look at the uh, the nodes in the Omni cluster, uh, we have our 128.4, which is the micro version we selected, and a kernel of 6.1. So it's a bit a bit newer than what we're getting on an Amazon Linux 2 uh, system. And I know Amazon Linux 3 is is coming out because Amazon Linux 2 is going to be end of life. Uh, but uh, yeah, you you'd have to do some upgrade, manual upgrades to get to that point. Okay, so I was planning on showing how to do an upgrade and a deletion on the clusters, but 16 minutes is a long time to wait and this video is already long enough. So we're just gonna keep it short now and I'm gonna show you upgrades and deletions in future videos. Um, but the numbers are pretty clear and, and they're pretty consistent across the board. I know uh, there's plenty of things that uh, Amazon would like to improve here, but if you go to any other cloud provider, you're gonna be at least half of that number. And even on-prem now with bare metal in a non-optimized environment, I have no image caching. Um, I'm doing just straight downloads. Uh, I'm still, you know, less than half of that number. So uh, yeah, that's one difference between an uh, Omni cluster and an EKS cluster.